Welcome back to ETF.com Live, the video edition. My name is Dave Nodig, Managing Director here at ETF.com. Today we had a question that I get in all sorts of different ways that gets to, I think, a core problem with ETFs and ETF investing. The question was, what's the right balanced fund if I don't want to be picking my asset classes and making all those decisions? Like, what's the hand-holding way of getting involved in ETFs? And the short answer here really is that there isn't one. Now, there are a handful of balanced, sort of aggressive, moderate, conservative type portfolios. A couple of funds from iShares foot that bill. The problem is that they're pretty anemic. And when I say anemic, it's not that they don't do what they say. Of course they do what they say. But to have only a handful of offerings out of 2,500 ETFs is a problem. So why don't we have more of these types of products? Well, if you think about where most people are putting their money on a regular basis, it's in their 401k or their defined contribution plan. And in defined contribution plans, balance funds, particularly target date funds that adjust their exposure as they approach a target date, they're the number one most used allocation in most 401k plans, and they make sense. They do what they say they do on the tin. The problem is ETFs aren't part of that market. For a lot of reasons, mostly structural, ETFs haven't been big players in 401k plans. So for an ETF that is a target date fund or a balance fund to find traction, it's got to find an audience that doesn't have anything to do with retirement saving at all. It's got to really focus on at least an entree into the taxable market. And that just hasn't been a place where balance funds have made a lot of sense. So what's the actual answer? What's What do you do if you are one of these investors who's bought in on ETFs, but wants a little bit more handholding? Maybe you're not a big enough account that you think you can get a financial advisor or you don't want to pay for a financial advisor. Well, that's where robo-advisors come in. Robo-advisors were really developed to solve this precise problem. What do you do about an investor who just needs a little bit of help? They don't need somebody to figure out what yacht to buy or whether they can afford their third home in Tahoe. They just need to help some, some help to get their fifty dollars or $100,000 correctly allocated. Robos are a great place to do this. Now, most likely your broker offers you a robo platform already. Schwab, Vanguard, they already have in-house robo platforms. Fidelity has a bunch of offerings here as well. Some of those are free and you should take a good look at them because free is a great price. There's usually a reason. Generally, you're gonna be limited exclusively to those house ETFs. Uh, generally, you might end up with a little extra cash. That, that's particularly true in the Schwab program. That's how they pay for offering that service for free. They make more money on the cash than they pay you. So there are, there are tricks there. Uh, a more traditional approach would be to go to one of the independents here, like Wealthfront or Betterment, uh, and there are a whole slew of other competitors there as well. You'll pay something around 25 basis points, quarter of a percent a year, um, but you'll get a fairly customized portfolio based on questions you answer about what your risk tolerances are, what you plan on doing with the money, et cetera. It's not going to be completely bespoke. It's not going to be like going to a financial advisor and having a conversation about you know your ESG concerns or anything like that. But it will get you invested and it will maintain that allocation and probably adjust it over time. Uh, so that's probably the right solution for most investors. Thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.